Today on TFL Bike, we're doing a comparison between two e-bikes, something that's not our usual bread and butter, but these things are fun. No, we've had a blast so far on all the e-bikes we've tested, and I'm really excited to make this video. We have the Aerial Rider X52 um, e-bike here that we've done a few videos on, and we've had it kicking around the office for a few months. But we just got in the Super 73 S2, and I'm really curious to compare them because Super 73 is a very well-known brand. Yeah, Super 73 is super well-known, and they make really good-looking bikes. And the interesting thing is that the two of these are actually pretty similar in terms of price, but there's a lot of back and forth on features and content that you get with each. So in this video, we're going to break down which one is the better bike for around about $3,000. Let's find out. All right, let's first talk about the class of e-bikes that these are. Both of these have a little two sticker uh, down here on the frame, which means they ship out of the box as class two e-bikes. Basically what that means is that they're limited to 20 miles an hour, uh, and you can either use it as a pedal assist bike or with the throttle up by your right handlebar. But both of these bikes can be converted into a class one bike where you disable the throttle, or both of them can be a class three bike where they can go uh, above 28 miles an hour and use pedal assist or the throttle as well. Now we get into some of the bigger differences between these two bikes. While their powertrains are pretty similar, if you can call them powertrains, their suspension is very, very different. So starting at the front, on the aerial you have an inverted fork. And this fork also has some adjustment. Over here on the Super 73, you don't have an inverted fork, uh, but you do also have some adjustment on this fork at the top as well as down here at the bottom. So they are both adjustable, but very different layouts for both forks. Around back, the Aerial has also some adjustment on its rear shock. And if we go over to the Super 73, well, this S2 model doesn't have a rear shock. So it is a hardtail. Um, Super 73 does make models that have full suspension, but this is not one of them. And then in terms of range on this aerial rider, about 70 miles of range. And then for the Super 73, they give you two figures. So in class two mode, it's about 40 miles. Uh, but if you bump it down to a class one bike, it's about 75 miles. So uh, they don't give you the same breakdown for the aerial rider, but um, I would expect in the same mode, you're probably uh, gonna get about the same range out of these two bikes. Another interesting difference between these two bikes is that the Ariel has this Shimano cassette back here so you can change between different gears, but over on the Super 73, it's just one gear. And from the riding I've done, it seems to be happy as a single speed bike. I haven't really spent a lot of time pedaling it, to be fair, because if you have an electric bike, well, why would you want to pedal? As far as brakes go, both of these bikes use these Tektro brakes. Uh, and they actually take brake fluid, this mineral oil. So the brakes on both of these bikes, they feel really good. Um, yeah, it's the same brand and they both feel nice. All right, let's talk about the displays. First, we'll power up the Aerial Rider. You can see it come to life there. Um, pretty basic LCD display. It's in kilometers right now, but it's pretty easy to switch to miles per hour. <laughs> we just didn't get around to that before the video, but we should definitely do that. You've got a battery gauge up top. You can use the plus and minus buttons to adjust your power modes. Uh, and then you've got a little trip computer down there as well. Uh, and you can cycle through some different things like your average speed, your max speed, and current speed. Um, but pretty sizable screen there, and it gives you all the info you need right away, which is cool. Now over here on the Super 73, you actually power it on on the tank. So give that button a little press there. And then this screen uh, takes a second or two, but it will come to life. Much smaller display on the Super 73, but you have your speed right in the center, a little bar graph around the outside for your battery. You have adjustable power modes, just like the Aerial Rider, and then you can cycle through a few different things like total mileage, uh, your speed. What I really like is that you can see your range. It actually doesn't only give you a battery indicator, but it tells you approximate range remaining, um, and then your level, and basically cycles through. I will say, um, I like the info that this screen gives you, but it's really hard to see with polarized sunglasses. You don't have that issue over here on the Aerial Rider. Um, so I wish that this gave you range remaining and then I'd call it the better screen, but there's drawbacks and positives to both of these. 
Both of these bikes offer the ability to add tons and tons of accessories for storage and a lot. One of the things that you can do with either one of these bikes is set it up to carry a passenger. So the Ariel comes with passenger pegs on the frame. However, the seat that comes on this model is a single rider seat. The Super 73, on the other hand, comes with a longer seat, but Super 73 doesn't have any foot pegs for it. However, they do have a location on the frame where you can put passenger pegs. So they both have to be modified to take a passenger but it's doable on either one. These are fun bikes, man. What a cool way to get around town. All right, we got a truck coming too. So ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, I got him. Oh man, seriously? And I'm at max speed now. Won that by a long shot. Not very close. No, that wasn't, that wasn't close at all. No, I'm a little disappointed. Woo! I always forget these things are pedal assist, so I come off the throttle and start to pedal just to get moving and it scares the crap out of me. Now since the last time that I rode this bike, I made a couple adjustments to the front suspension, softened it up a little bit, and it definitely rides nicer than it did. Uh, so I don't really think that the hardtail is the end of the world. I mean, full suspension would definitely be nice to have, especially because a lot of our roads here in Colorado are just very choppy. But, yeah, I mean, you can, you can get away with the hardtail for sure. And it's overall just a nice bike to ride. You could easily cover a lot of distance on this going 30 miles an hour. <laughs> you get moving pretty good here. The case is cooking right now. I can't keep up with them in this mode I'm in right now. So we're sitting here trying to figure out how to up this to a class three bike uh, so that the top speed is raised from 20 to about 28 or 30 miles an hour so we can get a true comparison of the real top speed of both of these bikes. But uh, here's the issue is I'm on the Aerial Rider website right now and uh, they have a bunch of pages and I'm trying to get to the user manuals and I just get a 404 page not found error. Um, and I've tried Googling it. I can't find a user manual for this specific bike anywhere on the internet. Um, which might be one of the big differences between buying something from these two brands. A brand that's very well known and has sold a lot of bikes. Probably has better support and, you know, a better contact system than uh, the Aerial Rider here. So, a little frustrating. If you know in the comments how to do it and we're missing something, let me know. But I've cycled through uh, all the settings in this menu and uh, I did switch it to miles per hour, but haven't figured out exactly how to uh, up the top speed. So yeah, unfortunately we tried our hardest, but that's all we can do. All right, so I traded with Case for a minute because I want to try out this uh, Super 73. We're going to go right for level four. Oh yeah, so the pedal assist on this, this bike feels so different than that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So first of all, the riding position. I'm a lot lower down to the ground on this, whereas that other bike, the aerial rider, you're kind of pitched up way higher. Handlebars come up higher on this, so I feel like I'm sitting in it instead of on top of it. But the biggest difference is the acceleration. Make sure there's no one behind me. Come to a stop right here. On the aerial, if you're sitting still and you grab the throttle, it'll kind of pull you forward in a similar manner as this, but the pedal assist is very different. So on this, if I'm stopped and I start pedaling, it feels like a normal bike for the first couple feet. And then you can feel the pedal assist kick in and you get up to speed pretty quickly. Yeah, this thing rips. Uh, on the aerial, when you start pedaling, I talked about how it scared me a little because it kicks in pretty aggressively and um, it's a little jerky. This is much more smoothed out. Feels a little more refined. Yeah, this thing's cool. I'm glad I'm in a full motorcycle helmet right now because you've got some speed you're carrying on this thing. So after spending a little bit of time riding each of these bikes, we have to talk about price and which one we would pick. So the Super 73 is $3,000 
and the aerial rider there is 2600 normally but right now it's on sale at 2400 yeah so. so right now at the time of shooting this video there's about a 600 dollars price difference between these two bikes which one would you pick you know there's a lot of features on the aerial that are nice to have i really like the fact that it is a full suspension uh, but i I like some of the components like the headlight and everything on this Super 73 better. I just think it's a, a slightly better looking bike. They're both good looking. The ride on this is just more refined. I like the geometry of the front end, the way that it feels at speed. I like that the menus are a little bit easier to navigate. And if you do want to get a full suspension version of a Super 73, you can. Yeah, you're just gonna spend a lot more it's for it. It's just gonna be even more. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, like you said, there's features on this that are nice to have. I like the screen a little better on this because you can see it in polarized sunglasses. Yeah. I like the design on that better. I like the fact that this one has, uh, you know, full suspension in the rear. Yeah, there's pros and cons. There's things to like about this. There's things to like about that, but I'm in agreement. That's the better looking bike. It just, it seems like it's more thought out. We'll put it this way. Even with this being the hardtail, this is still the nicer bike to ride, and I think you get what you pay for. Check out alltfl.com, and we'll see you in the next video.